children with uh, complications to do with deaf issues have been looked at as social misfits in society. Um, at the ministry here, what have you done about this? Uh, we have put in place policies and laws to safeguard against the abuses that carried out on persons with disabilities generally, but particularly persons who are deaf. For example, we have the policy, the National Policy on Disability of 2006, which talks about the rights of deaf persons, and also Uganda ratified the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. In there, we also have issues to do with deaf persons, not only children, but even adults who are deaf. What have been their success stories in society, where they are? Do you follow them to know whether they are still subjected to such a kind of uh, mistreatment? Yeah, there are many deaf persons who are successful. There is a member of parliament, Honore Bondes, Alex, who is a deaf person. Uh, we have uh, there the director for the Uganda Association of the Deaf, Mr. Ambrose Murangira, is a master's degree holder. These people have been to places where they have done a lot of advocacy for persons who are deaf. Many of them are able to read and write. Though they communicate differently, many of them use side language. And yeah, these are the success stories. Any person who's deaf, uh, the community looks at him or her as a person who's missing out on a lot of vital information. Uh, the fact that he or she does not uh, hear. Um, how do you tell that uh, actually the information that you often pass over to them really sink in their minds? Some of them can uh, read your lips or my lips as we are talking and they will get the information. Others use sign language interpreters to get the information that is passed on to the other members of society. For some people who don't know how to use sign language, these people write and so you can communicate through writing on a piece of paper and the conversation will go on. And normally that is what many people, in, especially us in government, but also in other uh, NGOs and our other stakeholders, this is what we do. I'd like to know, what are some of the challenges that you normally have with them or you normally face as a ministry dealing with people uh, having such a complications? So many of us do not have the skills in sign language. We are trying to learn. We've been trained a little bit, but when you don't practice, you lose the skills. So the major challenge we face is communication. But uh, aside from the ministry, as you said earlier, everybody thinks these are not um, um, human beings of sorts. So many of they, they, they are treated as outcasts. They, they, they abused. Many of them have been raped, especially the girls who are deaf and women who are deaf. And uh, many times they don't get help because they speak a language that many people do not understand. Now, what are you going to be looking at in this week as you celebrate uh, the, day, the International Day for People with Hearing Impairments? Deaf Awareness Week is going to run from 26th to 30th September. 2016, and it's the, the venue for the celebrations is going to be Lira District, Lira Municipality. Some of the activities we are going to do, we are going to have public lectures to raise awareness on the issues and problems that are faced by persons with, who are deaf, but also to try and forge ways of how these problems can be overcome by uh, collective responsibility. Then we are planning to have matches between the deaf students and the non-deaf students as a way also of creating awareness, but also creating inclusiveness so that the deaf persons are not stigmatized so that they know that they are part of the society. Thanks for joining me, Madam Agnes, uh, on this uh, special interactive news segment where we discuss issues that affect the people, also host people with sound mind. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.